Hello, welcome back. This is Master Yao and the Chronicles of Master Yao. I believe this is episode 9. The last time uh, uh, we talked about the races and we're going to continue that discussion. We talked about the four races, their migrations, and we talked about the four elementals that they're patterned after, the pros and cons of each race. And now we're going to talk about the positive versions of their culture and the negative versions of their culture, starting with the negative versions of the culture. I'm hoping that none of you become offended by what I'm about to say. It can be somewhat harsh. Uh, but understand that we, we have no um, negative feelings about any race, including our own. And what we're about to say is, is based on our research, and we hope that the information is going to help you uh, in your life and in your dealings with other people. Uh, it's one world here. Okay, I hope you'll enjoy. Race has a specific worldview, a specific brain chemistry, and a slightly different diet. So we're going to put up a chart for you uh, to talk about uh, the different uh, specializations of the races. And this talks about their strong points and about their weak points. In other words, there's a positive version of each race culture and there is a negative version. And there are two things that determine how this is. So when you look at the air culture, the Asian people, their two things are government and power, which determine if they manifest positively or negatively in their culture, if they progress or regress. For the fire culture, the, the white people, the uh, Caucasian people, it's technology and money. For the African water people, it's religion and sex. For the earth elemental Native Americans, it's civilization and stagnation. So we can see, we're going to talk about the negative cultures first. We can see that the way these, these two things manifest determines if they are positive or negative. So in the negative water culture, for instance, the air has corruption. In the negative fire culture, you have overconsumption due to the consumption of money, due to the, to the opposite use for money other than what is intended, trade. In the black uh, culture, the African culture, it's corruption in religion or counterfeit religion and the perversion and excesses of sex. Not so much in the actual sexual act itself, but the integration of sex into the uh, balance of society in an unnatural way. Really what we're talking about is the suppression of sex to only its carnal side and not to its spiritual side. With the Native American, it's the uh, presence of civilization or an unnatural civilization which causes the switch from a negative to a positive culture and it's stagnation. Stagnation is the enemy of the Native American peoples when something is supposed to change and they don't allow it to. So let's look at negative fire culture. We're going to do a quick version first. And I just want to give you an idea of what we mean. When you get into negative fire culture, it's very, very bad. Very, very bad. And again, this comes about through technology and money. So negative fire culture, here's what the state looks like. In negative fire culture, it is like a wire, wildfire that's gotten out of control. Money becomes a religion. The population throws evolution aside in a terrible uh, um, effort to obtain money. And the more money that is obtained, the more money in circulation, and the more the people at the top have money, the more the people at the bottom are rushing 
and an obsession to catch up, which means it becomes a self-fulfilling self thing, a perpetual thing, where you've got to constantly get more and more money and consume and consume and consume, and it just keeps spinning out of control. In this scenario, principles, truth, and justice are sacrificed. In negative fire culture, anything is sacrificed if it conflicts with commerce. Boundaries mean nothing. Nothing means nothing if it blocks commerce. Consumption and credit become out of control. And the main emotion that is driving all of this is greed. Okay, I think that we can see that for the last, or ever since uh, the Civil War, uh, the Europeans in America have been in negative culture. This started in Europe, and we talked about this in a past episode. It resulted from the elimination of the indigenous culture of Europe. Once in America, they, it, it rotated back and forth, the Europeans did, from negative culture to positive culture. They had many decades of positive culture. Because there was so much room to expand, in other words, the fire kept eating more. And as long as there was more forest for the fire to burn, uh, things were okay. And there was a positive uh, fire culture. When it got to a bottleneck, or it ran into a problem where it couldn't continue consuming or expanding, then fire culture turned negative quick. But this is not the case for negative water culture. So let's just talk a little bit more about the African. And now we're talking specifically about African Americans, which are different from mainland Africans. We're talking about African Americans. So African Americans, for the most part, have an affinity to the water elemental. They are yin people, as we said, and they function from the right brain. They are intuitive, especially the female. African Americans are people of spirit, of the rivers, of the blood. They have an affinity to rivers, boats, ships, fish, waterfowl, uh, to singing, dancing, to music, the power of sound, to the words of power, to rhythm, poetry, and things which make thoughts flow. They're very creative in thinking. They have an affinity to the beauty industry, rituals, and to social events, and they are the most expressive people on the planet. However, African Americans are mixed race for the most part. They are not true Africans. And when you do a little research, some surprising things come forward. This body, this group of people we call African Americans, are really four groups of people melded into one. Uh, we could say that there are 13, 9 to 13 tribes of African Americans. And we would that would be an accurate statement. They, they're coming from four uh, main uh, racial stocks. They're coming from West African DNA stock, uh, Central African DNA stocks, Native American DNA stocks, and the Irish, which is a European stock. Yep, that's correct. You heard me right. So, an interesting thing about this is that two of these um, tribes are not DNA-wise African American at all. They're Native American. So the Cherokee and the Catawba, uh, which are in southeastern America, already had heavy African blood in their DNA, which 
they obtained long before Columbus. Uh, this is the result of migration of uh, indigenous Americans and Africans in Central America migrating north and some people believe from an African settlement that was in Florida some four or five hundred years ago. So you have people who look African American but in their DNA the main DNA uh, base is Native American. So two of the uh, 13 if you will African American tribes are Native American based with African mixed. One of those tribes is Irish. So if you look at African Americans, you're going to find that a good percentage, 70% of them, have more Irish or white DNA than African DNA. And I'm not just talking about the light-skinned ones. Um, it's a surprising thing when people get their ancestry done. <laughs> when they find out that they might, there might be a larger percentage of Irish blood more so than any other Native American or African blood. So one of the African American tribes is more white than black. Hmm. And let's look at this Irish for a minute. So the Irish is not a typical Caucasian bloodstock. It's atypical. They are island dwellers, Ireland. For many centuries, this island of Ireland, which is near Britain, uh, was served as a colony for the Vikings. So within the Irish stock is a heavy Nordic influence, the people from Sweden, Norway, whatever. Uh, this goes back a long, long time ago. Then around 13th, 14th century, the Celts invaded Ireland and mixed with them. So there's a Celtic influence there over top of the Nordic. And uh, about two or three hundred years ago, the British, the Anglo-Saxons, invaded Ireland. And so on top of all of that, you have an Anglo-Saxon DNA mixed with these other DNAs. So the Irish people are really... Uh, a mixture of a, 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 a weird kind of a, a Native American, uh, European blend. And then they came to America. When they got to America, they were considered immigrants and they were considered uh, a subgroup between blacks and regular whites. The Irish were looked down upon back in the day. And therefore, they had the tendency to mix with the whites above them, or the whites who considered themselves above them, and the blacks below them, more so than other whites. And so you're going to see that there is maybe six to twelve African tribes which were the main uh, supply for slaves coming to America and thus are the main ancestry, ancestors of African Americans. So you've got about two Native American tribes, one white tribe or Irish tribe, and six to ten African-based DNA uh, stocks in what we call African-Americans. So let's get back to this negative water culture. What causes it? It is the onset of the conversion from positive water culture to negative water culture. And blacks after slavery entered positive water culture for quite a few years. Uh, probably from, a, from the end of the Civil War to about World War II, blacks were engaged in a positive water culture, a positive expression of their culture they were building. And after that, things changed. What caused them to change? There are two things. Stagnation in religious practice and sexual suppression. Remember, those are the two main driving forces in the water culture. Religion, sex. In negative water culture, let's describe it. It's like a great pristine river spilling its banks and forming a huge 
stagnant swamp filled with stagnant water and all kinds of snakes and things like that. As far as you can see, that's what negative water culture is like. The fire is like a wildfire out of control. Negative water culture is the opposite. It's like a river descending into a swamp and not being able to move, cleanse itself and be natural, not get to the ocean. That is negative water culture. Now the catalyst that caused it to change so quick is integration of blacks into negative fire culture. We're not saying that the whites were responsible. That's not what we're saying. We're saying that the change already started to happen because of religion and sex. And But the integration into whites accelerated it because you have a, 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 a water culture people integrating into the opposite energy, a fire energy, and a negative fire energy at that. The dominant emotion in negative water culture is marked by lust without discipline. So in the fire culture it's greed. Now the main thing that we see in negative water culture is the elevation of form over function. Form, the way things look, the way things appear, function, the way things work. Blacks choose what looks good over what actually works in negative culture. They follow popular, beautiful people instead of people who have wisdom and skills. And in negative water culture, what we're seeing is that it's a, it's a fatal flaw. People following what looks good on the outside, what's appealing, versus what actually works. And this can lead to a state of decline that, if allowed to continue and run its course, will cause that people to become dominated by external forces. This was the cause of slavery, not whites. So everybody's saying, well, you know, well, whites caused slavery, whites uh, did the slave trade. No. Whites were always looking for opportunities of commerce. But slavery would never have occurred if blacks had not gotten into negative culture in West Africa, if Africans had not. The combination of all of these factors does something even worse than that. It breaks up the unity. It's like water, there's nothing holding water together except the form that it's in. And if it's not, if, if the people aren't evolving, they drift apart and it's hard for them to come together and be unified. This is a fatal flaw. In negative water culture and relationships, women choose men who are a facade of accomplishment with a certain appeal, but men who lack actual masculine substance. These choices doom the women and they blame the men. In relationships and negative water culture, the men seek the golden calf. Remember Moses coming off the mountain with the tablets, Ten Commandments, and the people had built this golden calf as an idol? That's what black men chase in negative water culture. They're chasing an idol, a, a thing, an icon that has no real value. They're looking for something that's shiny and bright this female of hedonism. She is golden, shiny, but she has no use except during times of celebration. She cannot perform the rudimentary, boring task of daily life. The woman that they're after. And so what happens is, after the celebration is over, <laughs> The woman dismisses the man and goes back to the temple and goes to sleep. Because that was what golden calves do. <laughs> uh, and other women see who the men are chasing and they want to become golden calves. They want to become shiny and bright because they're seeing other men worshipping those other women who are golden calves. 
And so they, they don't want to work in the fields, they don't want to produce a harvest, and without the harvest, you don't have a celebration, so you don't need the golden calf. And um, when there is no harvest, that's not good. I don't have to tell you what comes after that. The principal attribute of the water elemental is spirit. It is the medium between mankind and the ethereal realms, the ethereal beings. That is what, you know, spiritual is. It is what connects humans to ancestors, to the elementals, to the spirit entities, to the deities. It is what opens portals into the non-physical realms so that religion or spiritual practice is possible. In short, the water elemental is the definition of religion. Religion from the Latin is religio, L-I-G-A-R-E, or religio. It means to bind, to connect. And in, and in the French, the old French, religion means reconnecting to God. And how does this happen? Well, some religions uh, say that God is an external thing to be worshipped. But spiritual systems say that God is an internal thing that has to be cultivated. In other words, God isn't outside of you, it's inside of you. You've got to cultivate it so you act like God. There are two key bridges in any authentic natural spiritual system that separate those things from counterfeit religions. The first bridge is that the elementals, and these elementals connect the tree of life to man or to woman. So you have this tree of life, which is the original blueprint of man. This is what God used to create man, this tree of life. And the elementals, the water elementals, are what bridges us to that tree of life. Then you have the second bridge, which is the woman, the black woman. She connects to the elemental and connects the elemental to man and the rest of humanity. So you have two bridges. One is the elemental, the water elemental. The second is the woman, a special kind of woman. We call her an oracle. And without these two key bridges, there is no spiritual system or authentic religion. Now the, the, the thing is that the three Judeo-Christian religions are not compatible to the natural structure of the spiritual system. They are not native to blacks and they are incompatible to the water culture. We're talking about Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. So Jesus, the prophet Muhammad, and Abraham all started authentic spiritual systems. But in each case, the existing military powers of the time created a new religion to replace the original religion. And they took this counterfeit new religion and, and set it up excuse me, to replace the original life system associated with the master. So when did this happen for Christianity? The Christian insurgency occurred about 300 AD. The Roman Emperor Constantine usurped the Gnostic Christians. These are the descendants of the 120 original apostles of Jesus, their descendants and their followers who by that time had grown into the thousands. They were called the Gnostic Christians. The Romans around 300 AD killed them, as many as they could find, burned their libraries and books. And after that, Constantine established a new religion he called Catholicism, which meant Orthodox. And he established this, at, this new faith at the Council of Nicaea in 304 AD. Of course, the Romans maintained that this was the original Christianity. It was not. The Islamic insurgency occurred in the period of time from 610 A.D. to around 700 A.D. Same scenario. About 632 A.D., the Prophet Muhammad died, and this created a problem. 
some, some quite a few years later, there was an assassination of Hussein Ali, the grandson of Muhammad, the prophet. And this assassination was part of the insurgency which created the caliph, the caliph of Yasid the first. In other words, uh, a very powerful person saw an opportunity. He killed the key people connected to the prophet Muhammad and proceeded to take control of the religion, which at, which at that time was growing fast. Um, of course, the followers of the Prophet didn't take this line down. There were many battles which they, for the most part, lost because you had a spiritual base of people uh, fighting against a military group. And, of course, we know what the outcome of that normally is. Gradually, over the next few years, the religion of Islam was wrested away from the descendants and the associates of the Prophet Muhammad and placed into the hands of a, a military general. The original spiritual movement started by the Prophet Muhammad was gradually modified to suit its new owners. This resulted in many battles and eventually the, the people following the Prophet lost and we had a split in Islam which created the Sunni and the Shiite factions which exist still till, till today. Now, what I'm saying may sound pretty harsh to those of the faith. I understand that. I, I don't want to offend anyone, but the truth is the truth. All three of the Judeo-Christian religions were designed for war, conquest, domination, regulation of the masses, and the subjugation of sexual freedom, a key point. Because all of these things, you know, made people resistant to rule. And the reason these religions were changed, the reason why the original religion was subdued and a new religion formed to replace it, is because the first religions, the people were resistant to being ruled by evil military people. Duh. And you're going to see that these religions were not designed to cultivate divinity. They were designed to cause people to be subjugated and to worship an external force. By the way, these external forces, this external God, was in fact their military masters, the generals, the emperors. And these religions have done their job well. We're going to see war and violence follow the creation of Islam for 14 centuries, almost constant. In Europe, for almost nine centuries, Christianity created war and violence. The Holocaust of the slave trade is a direct product of the Catholic Church and the edicts of the popes. It is this combination of counterfeit religion and sexual suppression that changed the positive water culture of blacks in America to negative water culture. And it continues until today. What is the Black Madonna? It's directly connected to negative water culture. So there is one trait that gives the enhanced ability to serve as a bridge or medium in a spiritual system. We talked about, you know, the elementals connecting the tree of life to the woman, but then you need a woman to, to be able to communicate with the elementals and connect to the man and the rest of uh, humanity. And what gives dark-skinned women this ability is melanin. That's the meaning of the Black Madonna. This blackness, this melanin, this ability to be an oracle is critical to spiritual work. And she uses a super sexual energy to accomplish this. In this case, sacred sexuality. 
This is the meaning of the Black Madonna. The dark-skinned woman of melanin, devoted, is willing to train, unselfish. She can use her sexual power for good. She can bring forth holy things. This is the oracle. These women are called by some indigenous peoples the mermaid clan. That's what the Native Americans called them. That's what the Africans called them. And many women in America are starting to understand that term. Some people call them the water sprite women, the sirens, the fairies. There's a lot of names for them. But when they're born, they're extra sensual. They have an extra right brain capacity. They are um, they're mediums, your psychics, your um, the women born with the veil over their eyes, all of that. But the problem is only one in a hundred thousand rises to her calling. Most of them reject it. This also explains the metaphor of the sirene, which are also fairies, water sprites, whatever you want to call them. So in the story of the sirenes, you talk about these sailors on the ship, they see the sirenes and you know they try to go to them. But what they're really talking about is priests. The sailors are really priests. It's a metaphor. And the priest on the water mean that the priests are doing rituals and the priests are trying to make contact with the entities, the ancestors. Uh, they're trying to make contact with the tree of life. But they can't, and they run aground and sink. And what, what they're talking about is that one of three things happened. These women were abused sexually, and they're angry because the abuse prevents them from using their mermaid talent to get to the tree of life, to, to, to bridge to the elementals. Or the men didn't have tantra ability, which, once again, the women can't do what they're built to do. Or it's a situation where, you know, um, the women's sexuality is suppressed because of the nature of that society. And if their sexuality is suppressed, again, they can't do their spiritual job. And so the ship hits the rocks and sinks. So the priests are unsuccessful and you have a false spiritual system, unable to do what spiritual systems are supposed to do. Men encounter the mermaid clan, but refuse to see what is there. They are looking for the golden calf, the shiny bright woman. And so women today speak of being a goddess, and as we talked about in a previous episode, for almost all of them, this is just a facade. They are not willing to do the hard work necessary to rise up to become, to gain and exercise their oracle power. Blacks must weave the authentic spiritual systems back into the fabric of our community. Black men must mature to the point where they are at the superior level and they must master the tantric art. Only in this way can they work with the mermaid women or any woman who has an oracle ability or is trained to have it to have an authentic spiritual system in our society. Black women must step us to their black women must step up to their role as spirit mediums and play them out. Only then can positive water culture be restored. Each of, the each of the four races has a positive version of culture and a negative version of culture, which depend on these two pivotal uh, social elements that we spoke about in this chart that we posted earlier. And if you study the book, Awakening the Master Masculine, uh, you, you can easily see how the negative cultures or the positive cultures for each of the four races manifest. And to close tonight, so I now have some good news and I have some bad news. So uh, the good news is that Africans will come to rule the earth in about 50 to 60 years. It's pretty much inevitable. It doesn't look like that's going to happen today, but I assure you things are going to change. Um, 
the fire culture, if it stays in negative fire culture much longer, and it looks like they are, they're going to basically burn themselves out. The technology is going to reach a point of being unsustainable. We could even see us go back to a time where we got sailing ships and we have to have grocery stores close to farms because we can no longer transport. We're, we, we're getting to a place where technology is eliminating people and you know next year we're looking at our retail apart collapse because there's too many stores, too many corporations are hungry, greedy for money, constant consumption, constant expansion. And the people just aren't making enough money to support it. These are the kind of things that's going to sabotage the fire culture. And the Africans are also, their genes are dominant. Africans are basically marrying uh, interracially and conquering all of the races by virtue of the fact that they're mixing with them. Whenever you have a mixed race, you have more Africans, less of the other races. And this has been happening now at an accelerated rate. And in about 50 to 60 years, a lot of the races will be diminished in such a capacity that they lose certain uh, political powers. The Africans are, are strong, uh, the African continent is a strong continent, and rich in uh, resources. And you can have all the technology you want, but resources trump trump it all the time. The problem is this, and I know a lot of black nationalists are going to be upset by this last thing that I'm going to say, but again, it's the truth. If Africans take power in the world in 50 to 60 years, and they are still in negative water culture as the African Americans and the Africans are today, the world is headed for 400 to 500 years of a dismal dark age, a terrible, terrible time. You think negative fire culture is bad, and it is bad. You've seen genocide, you know, terrible oppression, slavery, all kinds of bad things, injustice. But when fire burns a forest and there's nothing there, it's easy for the, the grass and the trees to grow again. It doesn't destroy, it simply delays. So no matter what the fire culture does to the world, it's doubtful that it's irreversible. With negative fire culture, with negative water culture, it's much worse. It's like the water melting from the glaciers and covering all of the landmass. You don't recover from that. The African race, the, the, the water culture, is the strongest culture. It's also the most evil when it's in a negative format. I'm warning you tonight. Black people in America have to get their act together. You've got about 50 to 60 years to do that. If you do not, and Africans take control of the world in 50 or 60 years, and they have not change from a negative water culture to a positive water culture, we're in for a terrible, terrible time. We'll celebrate only to find you have replaced one evil with a greater evil. My name is Master Yao. <laughs> I hope you won't stop following my chronicles <laughs> after this episode. But I got to tell it the way that it is. This is the story of the races. This is the Jedi journey. Wakanda forever. Good night.